In my hands, I have the most deadly, dangerous reptile in the hobby. I'm kidding, it's a leopard gecko. But there are five reptiles that you can keep as pets that can be dangerous to you, and I'm gonna tell you what those are today. My name's Adam, this is Shelby. You're watching Wiccans Wicked Reptiles. Stick around. I would like to introduce Shelby to the channel. This is one of the new leopard geckos in the breeding project that I bought in the summer. That whole thing's on Patreon if you want, but either way, this is Shelby. Beautiful female leopard gecko. Now, obviously this is a harmless animal and this is an animal that I am not afraid of at all. However, there are five reptiles in the hobby that could be deemed as dangerous. But spoiler alert, this entire video is to tell you that reptiles are not dangerous unless you put yourself in a dangerous situation. So that's what today's video is about, the five animals that could be dangerous, and I'm gonna tell you why you shouldn't be afraid of them anyway. Just respect them, very different. Number five, big monitors. Now big monitors can be dangerous if you don't know what you're doing. Now you can see me here with a wild Asian water monitor. This is an Asian water monitor that is not tamed down. It wasn't taken as a baby and socialized. This is an animal that is literally in the wild. I walked up to it and sat beside it. This is how scary they can be. However, not every monitor is gonna act this way. And unless you know how to read monitors, you should be staying away from them. Or you should be practicing with a Pilbara rock monitor or an Aki monitor or some sort of smaller monitor so that you can understand how monitors think and how they act because monitor species are very, very intelligent animals. And yes, a Komodo dragon is a monitor. Although I would never recommend keeping one as a pet, even if you could, which you probably can't, by the way, I know your uncle's brother's cat's dog's YouTube best friend has one in his collection, but in general, people can't just go out and buy one for their personal collection. It's not really a thing. Not here in the US and Canada anyway. But monitors can be cute and cuddly. In fact, I think they are. I would love to have an Asian water monitor, but I don't have the space for it because I basically need a room this size. It's a 400 square foot room that basically all my reptiles are in besides the reptile room across the hall, but neither here nor there, I don't have the space right now. When I do live in a place where I could have it outside for all year and then have a small indoor enclosure for the two or three days that it gets snowy or cold or has a freak flash freezing spell, that's different. So if you're like a Camp Kennan and you can have your animal outside, that's different. But inside, I don't think, this is about dangerousness, not, I just care about the captive keeping of reptiles. You shouldn't keep Water monitors in eight foot boxes. Stop doing this. Water monitors are actually going to tag you first with their tail. They're gonna slap you with their tail. Uh, this happened to me in Thailand with this giant water monitor and it didn't feel good. And it just gave me a little lackadaisical one. They can literally break bones. If you have tiny little arms, they can break your arm if they really get you with their tail. But you're not gonna put yourself in that sort of endangerment or that type of situation, you're gonna stay well clear until you understand how to deal with larger animals. And then big animals like lace monitors have serrated teeth that really can hurt you if you don't know what you're doing. Again, don't go near them if you don't know what you're doing and always have somebody who knows what they're doing in the room to teach you. This isn't a leopard gecko. Don't go buy one from a store. Oh, I'll figure it out. No, get proper training. Go to someone who knows what they're doing. Watch nerd videos. Kevin McCurley is the guy when it comes to large monitor species. So do your research. It's nothing to go into lightly. I feel like we're beating a dead horse here. Let's not make it become glue. Let's move on to number four. Number four, alligator snapping turtles. Now I know that there are examples of snapping turtles where they're cute and cuddly and they like to be scratched under the chin. There's also examples of humans that are seven feet tall. Do you get what I'm saying? Most of them aren't going to be like this. These are outliers. And I know people like to point towards them. Well, Clint has one. This is a common snapping turtle, by the way, not an alligator snapping turtle. Well, Clint has one and it's cute. Okay, yeah. Yours isn't going to be though. That's just not how it works. And alligator snapping turtle, oh, of course. Hey Google, turn on the reptile room. God, turning 13 on. Where were we? Alligator snapping turtles can literally take your fingers off. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on this. Just. Make sure you understand how to hold one, how to pick one up. Don't put your fingers in front of its face. This animal could be dangerous. Again, if you're a silly goose, if you're being an idiot, then it can be dangerous. But if you have one in captivity and you're using common sense and you're handling it properly, it's not gonna be dangerous. You're gonna be going home with all of your fingers. You're gonna be able to count to the top five with one hand. 
that was the stupidest joke ever. Let's move on. Number three, large constrictors. So large constrictors don't want to eat you. They don't want to bite you. They don't want to constrict you and they don't want to hurt you, period. They want to defend themselves. This is what they want to do. If you uh, present yourself as food, they will bite you and treat you like food. But there are ways around this. So no, constrictors, if you have more than two brain cells to rub together, are not going to be dangerous to you. However, if you don't know what you're doing and you go out and you get yourself a 15 foot Burmese python or reticulated python, which are known for their food responses, then you're gonna have an issue. Figure out how to use a hook, tap train, get that animal out, treat it with respect, understand what food mode looks like. Again, Kevin McCurley, he did not pay me by the way. Invoices in the mail, Kevin. Nerd, right? New England Reptile Distributors, Kevin McCurley. He's the guy that can teach you on video, but before you go out and actually get an animal like this, I recommend talking to your local reptile shop, breeder, whoever, hey, I'm interested in a retic. Do you mind if maybe I clean some tubs and watch you handle a retic? I know it sounds ridiculous. Oh, no one would ever do that. People do that. And guess what? If someone said to me at the reptile store, if I was there, hey, Adam, I'm a 20 year old kid and uh, I can get a, a Burmese python. Mom and dad said it's okay. But I think that maybe I should, okay, yes, absolutely come over to my house and I'll teach you how to handle a Burmese python. Not that I'm a huge expert or anything, but I understand how to take care of Burmese pythons. I've been doing it for years. So yes, people will be more than happy to teach you and help you learn, especially people, say at a reptile shop. Hey, you wanna come clean tubs for a day? Absolutely, no problem. I'll take, you know, an hour and teach you how to handle a retic. I recommend for sure you learn how to do it because these animals could be dangerous, but something I wanna drive home. Every one of these animals is less dangerous than the Doberman across the street. Not that Dobermans are bad, by the way. Uh, don't vill villainize any dog. I'm just saying a dog can kill you just like these animals. And we've seen it before time and time again. The way that you don't get killed by a dog is you don't go up and pet a dog that you don't know right? You understand how a dog works, the behavior, you ask the owner. It's the same sort of idea with a snake. It's the same sort of idea. So yes, reptiles could be dangerous, but so can dogs. And we never see videos about, oh, the top five most dangerous. Well, you do see videos like that. They're stupid. But either way, we're not making laws against, oh, you shouldn't be able to keep a dog over 140 pounds, you know? In Ontario, we actually ban pit bulls because uh, we're stupid and that law is 20 years old and outdated, but regardless, these laws are stupid. And that's what I'm trying to say this whole video. Animals are not inherently dangerous unless you put yourself in a position where they can be dangerous. Well, except for number one, but let's just move on to number two first. Number two, crocodilians. Okay, so I don't really know of too many crocodilians that can be tamed down like say a Burmese python, right? Generally with a Burmese python, if you know how to handle it, you take it out, you know it's not in food mode, you're good to go. Crocodilians for the most part, you know, painting with a broad brush are a little bit um, less predictable. And unpredictability is something to be afraid of or something not to be afraid of, but something to really, really respect. Really, really respect, not be afraid of. And here's why. If you are handling, say even a four foot dwarf caiman, that thing can snap around on you in a second. If you're handling, say, a 10 foot alligator, right, an American alligator, that thing can literally take your arm off. So I don't, well, maybe not a 10 foot one, but a bigger one. You understand what I'm saying, right? I'm, I'm just trying to say through the course of the video, respect these animals, stay away from them if you don't know what you're doing. If you don't work at Gatorland and you're not trained, don't do this. Don't go to Gatorland and try to feed reptiles. You know, don't have a bunch of gators and try to feed these gators. Don't have a Nile crocodile unless you're Dingo Dinkleman and you know what you're doing. Know what you're doing because even the experts make mistakes. So I just recommend not having these pets altogether. If you are trained, however, you can. And I do not think there should be laws against it. I just think that maybe we should use our heads and maybe not make a bunch a bad app because of one bad app. You know what I'm trying to say with the bad, bad up one apple, bad apple spoils the butt. Okay, move on to number one. Number one, venomous snakes. Now this is obvious and here's why they're number one because although I think that in some ways a crocodilian might be more dangerous than a venomous snake, especially the smaller ones, here's why. If a little curver's dwarf came in, right, bites you whatever, you know, it's just gonna suck. You might need stitches if it really gets you an American alligator, whatever. But there's ways to kind of get away from it, get out of it, whatever. 
If you have a black mamba, right? Which I mean, most people aren't gonna have as a pet. I think that you should be able to, if you go through the licensing and training or whatever else, should be no laws against that. But let's suppose that you get bit by one or a king cobra, whatever, something that's very dangerous like that. If they just get you, just nick you, that's it. That could be lights out forever, depending on how you respond to the venom. You might get really lucky and be a Tyler Nolan and get escorted by a police officer to the hospital and then barely make it out alive. That could happen too. But also you could live 45 minutes from a hospital and you show up and they don't have the anti-venin and then you die. That could be a thing that happens too. So even when I'm in the wild with the best snake handlers in the world, like you see here in Indonesia with a wild king cobra, uh, I'm nowhere near the mouth of the end of this thing and I'm letting the actual experts take care of it. And when I watch the experts, I don't feel like they're in danger at all because they know what they're doing. This video should have been called, know what you're doing, don't be an idiot. That's basically what it should have been called because no reptile is dangerous unless you put yourself in a dangerous situation. If you are handling eyelash vipers, squams, what is Pope's pit vipers, small vipers, let's say, for example, and you're handling with a very long hook and you know what you're doing and you're not getting close to them and you're not being complacent and you lock enclosures and you have a room that's locked also and you make sure that there's nobody around that can get into it, then you're good. There's going to be no issues 99.9% .9 of the time with those animals. So respect the animal, do your due diligence. I'm tired of like beating this into you. So let me know what you think. What's the most dangerous reptile in the world? And if you uh, will agree or disagree, do you agree with me that reptiles aren't really dangerous unless you make them dangerous? Let me know in the comment section below. I'd love to hear from you. Oh, and diamonds fly. I'm just filming a video about leopard geckos after this. So I just figured I'd kill two birds with one stone and Shelby's pretty cute. So let me know. Cute, should we do more with, anyway. For as little as a dollar a month, you can be part of the Patreon club. Really appreciate that, helps the channel. And uh, even if you can't, I really appreciate you watching the videos. Everybody can like and subscribe, costs you no money, and really, really helps. But uh, Patreon's available in the link below. And there's a whole bunch of extra stuff from Madagascar and even stuff from Asia from two months ago that I didn't show anybody else. So that's it. Because we do videos Mondays and Thursdays, that means I'll see you in the next one.